Let's fix those skewed vertical lines with just a bit of Photoshop and turn this image into this one. As always, you can follow along by downloading the raw file from the description of this video and now let's jump into it. So for this tutorial, we are going to work with two different images. Both of them are HDR because we want to get all the details out of the highlights and the shadows. So this will be our base image and we are later combining it with this one just to get some higher image quality without any lens flare. But first, let's go through the base image. And the very first thing I want to do is to try and fix those skewed vertical lines. I'm going to start this by heading into the Optics tab and I want to right away activate the Remove Chromatic Aberration setting. This doesn't have anything to do with those vertical lines, but we can also use the Profile Corrections. And if Photoshop doesn't automatically set the lens profile, you want to choose the Canon EF 16 to 35 mm f4 lens. Using this profile, you can see the image will get a little bit less distorted right away, but it still doesn't fix those vertical lines. So for the next step, let's go ahead and go into the geometry tab. Here we do have a bunch of options. First, we could let the camera raw editor do the adjustments automatically by hitting this big A button right there. This actually doesn't look too bad. However, we can also fix it manually. So let's disable this. For this image, I'm most worried about those vertical lines since they are pointing in a very strange direction. So to fix that, I'm going to bring down the vertical slider. We do get a grid overlay, which will help us to fix those lines in a proper way. I think that's looking quite good. At this point, you can see we are creating a pretty large gap towards the bottom of the image. We can make use of the offset Y and just bring the image down a little bit, giving us back some of that sky up there. So we don't have to crop too much. I think I went to a little bit overboard with the vertical slider, so I want to adjust it a little further. Let's bring it up a notch. Of course, we don't want to overcompensate here. So I think this is looking pretty good. I do want to rotate this image just a little bit so we can make use of the rotate slider here instead of using the crop tool. All right, that looks great. Still, we are having some issues with those gaps and that's a reason for me to use a little bit of cropping as well. So we want to take away a part from the top, keeping the church nicely centered. And let's also take away a part from the right and maybe the bottom part like this. And I think we can fill those gaps later with the content aware tool. So that's looking really, really good. And you can see how by just using the geometry settings, we quite heavily fixed the skewed vertical lines. And we went from this one to this one, which is looking so much better. At this point, let's work on the overall look of this image. Uh, I want to start in the basic tab. Actually, let me change the profile going to Adobe Standard just to lessen the contrast a bit. Right away for those blue hour shots, the white balance is usually off. What we can do is to just let the camera raw editor automatically set the white balance and you can see it's doing a pretty good job. However, I do want to have it slightly warmer. So let's see, I want to bring up the temperature just a notch right about here. Okay, then at this point, we also want to work on the exposure. So far, taking a look at the histogram, you can see it's looking pretty good. Still, I do want to bring up the overall exposure, making this image brighter. I also want to bring down the highlights so we don't lose any details in the building. And let's bring up the shadows to make the darkest parts brighter. And for a little more contrast, I'm going to bring up the whites. I think we can push the contrast itself as well. So let's do that. Wonderful. Now I want this image to be very sharp. So I'm going to add texture. I am not going to drop the clarity like I usually do. And I do want to actually increase the dehaze just to add a little more contrast, just a tiny amount. And finally, let's also bring up the vibrance. 
wonderful. That looks great. Now for this image, there actually aren't any masking adjustments. I think it looks quite good so far. We don't need to mask anything. I do want to apply a little bit of color grading. So let's go ahead, open up the color mixer tab. I want to work on the saturation for a moment, bringing up the orange tones while reducing the yellow saturation. And I want to play around with the green tones for a moment. This will mainly affect the roof on top of the church. I think it looks better with a bit more saturation here. And then I'm going to bring down the blue saturation because the sky is very, very vibrant. And let's also bring down the aqua tones. Okay, I think this looks quite good. We could also head into the luminance tab, bringing up the blue luminance, which will just make the sky a little brighter. Perfect. Now we're almost done. I'm not going to apply any split toning. I just want to head into the calibration tab down here, bring down the blue primary hue. This will give this church a little more of an interesting color tone. And I'm also going to bring up the saturation here. All right, that looks great. Now the only thing that's left to do is the sharpening in the details tab. Let's bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking. By the way, I'm holding down the Alt key to make the mask overlay visible. And then I'm going to bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. Now that we have added the base image, we want to apply the same settings to our second image. So let's hold down the shift key, click on the second image, right click, choose synchronize settings, make sure to check all and hit OK. Now with both of those images edited, we can open them up in Photoshop. So again, we want to select both of them and make sure to open those objects. In the next step, we are going to grab this layer right here and drag it over to the second image and just drop it here. Of course, we want to align those two images. For that, I'm going to rasterize those two smart objects. Then select both of them, go to edit, choose auto align layers and hit OK. With this out of the way, we want to mask out this finger. So create a layer mask. Grab the brush tool, set the foreground color to black, and then just start brushing out the finger. Just like this. And the reason for me to block those lights with the finger is simple, because blocking the lights will reduce lens flare, as you can see, especially on the right side. Now let's merge those two layers. And it's time to clean up this image. First, I'm grabbing the lasso tool and I want to fix those gaps. I'm just using the generative fill for this. And once this is done, I'm again merging everything. And let's use the new remove tool to get rid of some of those distracting objects. Since this is rather boring, I think I'm just skipping that part for this video. So with that, we are done editing this HDR Blue Hour scene. I hope this tutorial was helpful and interesting. As always, if you have questions left, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.